Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am going to yield my time to Mr. Gowdy. I thank the gentleman from, uh, from Michigan. Mr. Ledman, for those who are uh, perhaps watching and not familiar with the full panoply of investigative techniques, surveillance uh, is a tried and true investigative technique, correct? Yes, sir. What about consensual encounters where you just do a knock and talk, where you walk up to someone and ask them? I mean, there is a reason Dostoevsky wrote Crime and Punishment. There is a reason Edgar Allan Poe wrote The Telltale Heart. Sometimes people confess, don't they? Yes, sir. There are there's several tools in the toolbox, especially when you are faced with uh, the fact that we know that these weapons were going to be used in such carnage down in Mexico and the United States. We should have pulled every tool out of that toolbox, not just to make our case. Our case should not have been the priority here. The stopping, the, the flow of those firearms should have been the number one priority, and we should have reached into that toolbox. We should have conducted interviews, or we should have done interviews uh, to uh, or surrounding people. We should have uh, tracked these weapons better. We should have followed everything by the letter to stop them. I mean, just what do we stop with the number of guns? One, have five, ever, ten? Have you ever heard tell of a law enforcement officer stopping someone for speeding when really they may have had another purpose in mind? I have heard. Uh, that it happens from that time you follow to time, people doesn't? on your way for them. You know, it's con they're going crossing to the yellow line. Right. Sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake, and then exactly. And when you do a lawful, non-pretextual car stop, it also opens up the full panoply of other search options, right? Like searching the vehicle or a pat down. Yes, there's how about a proffer? Is, is that is that a is that in your in your toolbox to go to yes, a United sir. States attorney and say I'd like to? proffer this person? I would like to send him a grand jury subpoena? Correct. It is the same way you conduct every other investigation other than this one, right? Correct. From shoplifting to murder. We do them all the same way except this one. Correct. Special Agent Newell, I, I happen to think this was ill-conceived from its inception. You have testified repeatedly that the purpose was to destroy, dismantle um, drug cartels. So I am going to ask you again, how would this ever have succeeded? What was your purpose? How would we have known, hey, this was a great investigation, it succeeded? Well, sir, you, you, you said that to disrupt a drug cartel. It, the, the, the purpose of this investigation was to disrupt and dismantle a firearms trafficking organization that was feeding firearms. In Mexico? In the United States, the firearms trafficking organization in the United States, not only the straw purchasers, the middlemen, the transporters, the financiers, that was. Well, then, when the guns were going into Mexico, you should have known that this was an abject failure because that's not what you wanted, right? Absolutely. We didn't want any guns. So, when you found out the first gun went to Mexico, why didn't you not abort the investigation? Because we were still putting the facts together to be able to convict when all the When is the very first time you knew or should have known that firearms were going to Mexico? Well, I believe it was when, I got the first, we, when we got the first traces. I was advised of the first traces, which I believe was November of 2009. 2009. And when did you abort the investigation? The investigation is ongoing, sir. Right. That is my point. So you knew the weapons were going to Mexico. Right. Were you at some point going to let Special Agent Canino know about it. Mr. Canino knew about the investigation. He knew he knew that you that, that weapons were going into Mexico. Well, absolutely, yes. When were you going to let your Mexican counterparts know about it? I'm assuming they knew that firearms. Because I have, you know, sir. One of the issues about that is there's only one field division in this country, only one, that has a PGR representative in it. The, uh, that's the Mexican Department of Justice. In all my years of working with Mexico, I spent four years in Bogota, Colombia, representing ATF in South America. I am very, very, very key on the fact that we need to share information with our foreign law enforcement partners. Well, you testified earlier that you were going to turn the information over to Mexican prosecutors and let them prosecute. Because I ask you, were you also going to allow U.S. law enforcement officers to be extradited to Mexico for breaking their law, and you said no? So my question to you is this, how in the world are you going to get our brothers and sisters in law enforcement to trust? That? Why would you trust the prosecution if you don't trust them during the investigation? Well, sir, to answer your question about the, 
drug cartel, the kingpin, or if you, your words, the kingpin to get the, that we are going to get the guns in Mexico, we did not have information until late in this case, an ongoing part of this case, who that individual was. And I invited, with Mr. Canino, we invited in December of 10, as well as in January, Mexican prosecutors to come in. I don't think that's ever been done before, and I'm the one that requested it. Uh, did, did you debrief them on Fast and Furious? Yes. Did, did you tell them that guns were going into Mexico? Well, yes. You told them when? In, well, throughout, well, my PGR representative that I have in my office, who has been there for two years, knew about this case, not in specific. When the first gun showed up in Mexico, he was that aware. you knew was from Phoenix, the first one that was connected to this showed up in Mexico, did you go interview the straw purchaser? No, sir, we did not. Why not? Because, again, our strategy was, and we knowing from years of experience, you take off one straw purchaser, you are not having an effect on the greater organization, which is at that point in November of 2009, you have to realize it wasn't even Have you ever security. flipped a cooperating witness before? Yes, I have. How do you do it without asking them? How do you do it without interviewing them? It depends on what your goal is in the investigation. Your goal is to bring down an organization. It is very compelling testimony to have someone from within the organization testify against his comrades, right? Yes, sir. So why didn't you go, why didn't you approach him? Approach who, sir? The, the, the one straw purchaser? Uh, yes, the straw sure. purchaser. Again, the goal, sir, in this case was to uh, take off the whole organization. We felt that by, by, working, by just trying to flip one straw purchaser, if he in fact did flip, it would not affect the overall goal of so these the gentleman's time has expired. Uh, we will have a second round.